know that the world can be a very noisy place, can it? The TV commercials blaring, the radio booming, people yelling to be heard, grown-ups telling us to, what to do all the time. <laughs> <laughs> all right. Any comments from the peanut gallery? <laughs> so what would happen if for one minute the rest of the world would be quiet and we would have one minute of quiet time. Imagine, imagine what, what you would do to fill that minute. Imagine what you might say. I have a pretty good idea of what I would say. Sometimes the best thing to say is nothing at all. So let's try that. We're looking at you, Carl. So is he. Well said. All right. Good job. Well, I would like you to take something with you today. And it's nothing really, but I would like you to to put your hands into the shape of a bowl. And I would like us to have one minute of uninterrupted quiet. And as we're doing that, I want you to look inside your empty bowl and just sit there or think or just simply be. Okay, one minute. then and let it out. So the next time the world gets all crazy and busy and noisy, I want you to remember your empty bowl and that one minute of uninterrupted quiet can make a big difference to us. So let our silence be our amen. Good job. All right. Well, we have some quarters to pick up, right? So every month we we pick a special mission project. We save our quarters all month long, and then we're able to send them some money. So this month, our project is the Ronald McDonald House in Cedar Rapids, and they were very helpful to a member of our, our congregation. So that's who we're going to pick this morning. So, or for the month, who would like to see if there are any quarters out there? Do you want to do it? Yeah. 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 Does Lynn want to do it too? Yeah, he's got his quarters ready. He's got his quarters ready, okay. Here you go, hon. <laughs> Quarter two ready. <laughs> okay. Let's sing our thank you song. Thank you, Jesus. Amen. Thank you, Jesus. Amen. Thank you, Jesus. Amen. Thank you, Jesus. Amen. Thanks for giving. Amen. Thanks for giving. 
lesson this morning is from the Gospel of Mark, chapter 15, <coughs> verses 22 through 38. They brought Jesus to the place called Golgotha, which means skull place. They tried to give him wine mixed with myrrh, but he didn't take it. They crucified him. They divided up his clothes, drawing lots for them to determine who would take what. It was nine in the morning when they crucified him. The notice of the for formal charge against him was written, the king of the Jews. They crucified two outlaws with him, one on his right and one on his left. People walking by insulted him, shaking their heads and saying, Ha! So you were going to destroy the temple and rebuild it in three days, were you? 
save yourself and come down from that cross. In the same way, the chief priests were making fun of him amongst themselves, together with the legal experts. He saved others, they said, but he can't save himself. Let the Christ, the King of Israel, come down from the cross. Then we'll see and believe. Even those who had been crucified with Jesus insulted him. From nine until three in the afternoon, the whole earth was dark. At three, Jesus cried out with a loud shout, Eloi, Eloi, lama sabachthani, which means, my God, my God, why have you left me? After hearing him, some standing there said, look, he's calling Elijah. And someone ran, filled a sponge with sour wine, and put it on a pole. He offered it to Jesus to drink, saying, Let's see if Elijah will come to take him down. But Jesus let out a loud cry and died. The curtain of the sanctuary was torn in two from top to bottom. When the centurion, who stood facing Jesus, saw how he died, he said, This man was certainly God's son. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Let us pray. Gracious and merciful God, may the words of my lips and the meditations of all our hearts be acceptable in your sight. O Lord, our strength and our Redeemer. Amen. Well, last week we learned that uncertainty is a gift that allows us to be open to learning more about God. When we are certain we know everything about our faith, it keeps us from asking questions and developing a deeper and closer relationship with God. Uncertainty always invites us to know more. And hopefully, we learn to trust God with all of the unknowns in our lives. Trusting God allows us the freedom to grow into all we have been created to be. Well, today our gift of the dark wood is emptiness. So when I think of being empty, I remember times when I have forgotten to fill my gas tank and I'm stranded in the middle of nowhere, or when an all-day workshop has fried my brains and I have nothing left to give, I don't really think of it as a good place to be. But in our book, the author and pastor Forrest Church describes many things that keep us feeling empty and unworthy before God. Like when you're, you're self-conscious about your appearance, when you feel guilty about things you have done or failed to do, when you sometimes have a hard time accepting yourself or forgiving others, when you are a less than perfect parent, or child, or spouse. You have secrets. Your life is stressful. More than once your heart has been broken by betrayal or loss. You beg for an answer to the question, why? Why this? Why me? Why now? You wonder what your life means. So how does Reverend Church know us so well? Because he knew himself so well. He says it doesn't matter how brilliant you are or how successful you are. We all worry that we're not good enough, that we're going to fail, that someday people are going to find out that we're just a big fraud. 
And we spend so much of our time trying to